Welcome to Roadshow News Recap, hopefully with a much more reliable video feed than last week. Now, if you haven't heard or seen by now, Ford's got a new pick -em up truck called the Lightning. And on today's show, we plan on taking a deep, deep, deep dive into this all-electric rig, which is pretty amazing. I mean, among other things, it can power your house. Yes, your entire house. After the Ford storm passes and we move on from lightning, we've got a ton of other big stories to discuss. There's a new Toyota Tundra coming. Europe's Opel built a slick little electric sports coupe, and there is so much more. So, Sean, it is great to see you again, my friend. It's so good to see you as always. Happy Friday. Here we are again, and this has been one heck of a week, if I could say that. <laughs> You're telling me I've written about, oh, uh, 42,000 words on the lightning this week. I'm If I never type lightning again, I will be happy. Or mega power frunk. Or mega <laughs> power frunk. <laughs> yeah, right? So, so I've got to ask you, Sean, lightning, is it everything you hoped and dreamed it would be? Right off the bat, and I'll keep it short and sweet, I actually think it was a little bit better than what I was expecting. Quite honestly, uh, I just, I really dig what's going on with this, and we're going to dive into that in just a few moments, Craig. Yeah, I was uh, pleasantly surprised as well. Uh, we also p basically posed that same question to our Roadshow Instagram followers. And of course, we'll get to the results of that poll just a little bit later in the show. So make sure you stick around. Of course, if you are watching live, thank you so much. And make sure to drop your questions or comments in the chat box. We love interacting with you guys when we get a chance to do that. Also, check out Roadshow News Recap every Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern right here on Ro the Roadshow YouTube channel or Facebook, or even Twitch. Like nut allergies, we're everywhere. So, Sean, <laughs> lightning. It's a pretty good joke, eh? That was good. Or, or that not. That was a good one. I enjoyed oh, it. Or not. <laughs> I thought so. <laughs> but lightning, uh, fill us in on some of the basics, because there's so much going on here. Yeah, on the basics, I think just the overarching thing we got to start with is that this is, it's kind of, normal truck and what we've seen in this space so far has been really exciting you know from tesla Cybertruck, rivian r1t those were you know up and comers they're they, you know they haven't built pickup trucks before so it's a, it's a big deal when ford is going to build one an electric one and they're taking a very very different approach you know they're not going crazy you look at this thing right away you know it's an f-150 I mean, this could pass for an F-150 like refresh with an engine under the hood, you know, but they've gone very conventional. And I think that's a huge takeaway that we have to start with, Craig. Yep. It looks like an F-150. It feels like an F-150. It'll drive somewhat similarly to an F-150. So unlike a Cybertruck or maybe a Rivian or something, this is really going to appeal to those traditional truck buyers. And as we've seen over the last few decades, like they matter, right? Because those are the people that, that for generations will buy a Ram truck or a Ford truck or whatever. They're super brand loyal. And to have a product that obviously is very different with an electric powertrain, but everything else about it is very familiar to anyone that's you know owned a truck or specifically an F-Series truck before. So I think it's, it's, an, um, it's an easy way for Ford to, to offer an electrified truck, but it's also a very shrewd decision, I think because they're going to they're going to capitalize on the buyers they already have, right? They don't have to go out and find new ones. Yeah, I, I think uh, we had some internal discussions here at Roadshow among the staff and really I think the main question or what this vehicle is going to solve is are Americans ready to buy electric vehicles in bulk? Period. I think it comes down to yeah. that. Because if you can't make the F-150 into a successful electric vehicle, I don't know what can. This, if anyone is un not aware, this is the best-selling vehicle in America. I think there's an old adage, you know, like every, you know, few seconds an F-150 flies off the lot. It it's true. I mean, that's how popular this vehicle is. So if you can't slap a battery in this and get, you know, 50, at least 50,000, 80,000 people to buy it a year, then we're in for a much longer, bumpier road as it comes to EV adoption in the U.S., in my opinion. 
Yeah. Looking at the chat, Solrack asks, what will uh, the battery life be when you're towing with the F-150 Lightning? We'll get to battery life in just a minute. The short answer is we don't know when you're towing because there are so many variables involved in That's that. the question Jeez everyone is asking. <laughs> yeah, right? That and the destination price, <laughs> yeah. which we'll get to as well. Um, yeah. Cheese Inc., one of our regular weekly, uh, weekly viewers, says Hi, this Cheese. is how you do the right EV. Yeah, this is how you do the right EV, not like Hummer or uh, you know, uh, competing with um, other EVs like that. But you take it, an established product, I think is what he's saying, and, and you just run with it. So it's kind of what we were saying. Yeah. Although yeah. Over here. Avik Sakar says this already looks old and haggard one year before it launched. So. Difference of opinion there. <laughs> it looks pretty good in person, I think, but obviously it's not yeah. everyone will love it. Yeah, yeah. Over here, we have some people echoing the same kind of thoughts in the Facebook chat. We have Jerry Clayton saying towing is going to drop the range significantly. Uh, I, I definitely think that's going to be true. And maybe Ford will surprise us and be like, no, we have this thing to solve that. Uh, we don't know yet. They haven't spoken to it. Um, all we know is that this F-150 Lightning has gone through the exact same kind of durability and you know all those sorts of quality check tests sort of things that a standard f-150 would uh so that'll be interesting and uh jerry all jerry clayton also says he doesn't see this trucks uh being better than tesla's battery capacity capability so uh mm. we'll have to wait and see and like we said we have some battery specifics we're going to dive into in a few moments yeah, exactly. But as for the truck itself, Ford's pretty much offering it in just one flavor. You get the uh, the Super Crew body, that's the big one. And then there's a five and a half foot bed, which is the shortest one that they offer. Uh, you do get some choice when it comes to drivetrain, though, because two different battery sizes are going to be offered. They haven't commented on the actual capacity of those batteries yet. They are lithium ion, um, but we estimate them at about 110 kilowatt hours and I'm going to say 150 kilowatt hours based on a little, you know, back of the napkin math because the the um, the smaller one gets you 230 miles of range they're estimating and the larger one 300 miles. And it's important to note that is with standard full-time four-wheel drive because they put an electric motor front and rear, boom, easy four-wheel drive. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Important to note there's not going to be re rear wheel drive uh, at least so far. Uh, maybe eventually down the line, you may see a, a more of an entry level one come with just rear wheel drive. We'll see that could do think good things for price and range, uh, just because you're obviously sacrificing some range, uh, pushing power to all four wheels. Uh, but yeah, in addition, that, that, that'll be the standard range and the extended range. Uh, and for the standard range, you're still looking at 426 horsepower, which uh, that, that's pretty good. <laughs> and then you bump up to the extended range and you're looking at 563 horsepower. Uh, Ford estimates uh, for both of those battery packs are about 775 pound feet of torque. Uh, so that's a lot. Yeah, that's yeah. that's that's pretty good. <laughs> no matter which flavor you of lightning you want. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was just looking in the YouTube chat again. Brandon Warsham says, no one who buys this is going to be towing regularly. And I would say probably, possibly, because if you're towing, yeah. I don't know, like a pair, a couple snowmobiles or something, it probably has, you know, very little effect on range. So if you're going out to the lake mm -hmm. or you've got some snowmobiles, you're going up north for winter, maybe not such a big deal. Of course, if you've got 10,000 pounds uh, you know, in a dump bed trailer or something, crushed stone or whatever. Yeah, the range is probably going to be pretty bad. <laughs> but it would be pretty yeah, bad. The fuel economy would be pretty bad with a gasoline engine or a diesel engine too. So, that's a super that's valid the... point. And I, I, there's just so many questions we have to answer still, and we're not going to know all of the answers until we're able to drive one and you know inevitably hook a trailer to it and put a bunch of stuff in it. Uh, you know, maybe we'll ship one to Emmy's house and she'll load it up with stuff and take it somewhere. You know, I, I don't know. But who knows what we could have planned for this thing when it finally hits the road. <laughs> Speaking of Ms. Hall, what are some of the off-road numbers, Sean? Ah, uh, yeah, for the off-roadies, uh, we're looking at approach and breakover angles of 25.4 and 17.8 degrees, respectively, and departures 24.2 degrees. So, yeah. The, Is that good, the, I guess? Those are the, yeah, I, 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 yeah, I mean, I don't think Ford's trying to peg this as the end all be all off road truck in any way, shape or form. But a uh, cool thing is that that battery pack under there is 
full of protection for when you do yes. uh, take it off road, which is uh, very nice and very important that that essential piece of the powertrain is going to be protected because, you know, Ford's whole thing is that, you know, th this is an F-150 that just happens to have a battery in it instead of, you know, a diesel or a gas engine, you know, so you yeah. better believe people who buy it, uh, they're going to want to take it off road at least a little bit. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and if we didn't mention earlier, uh, the truck is rated to tow up to 10,000 pounds, which for an EV may sound ambitious, but I think it'll be okay as long as you don't have to go too far. <laughs> and it's also rated to tow up to 2,000 pounds. Um, let's talk now, Sean, about some of the visual differences, because like we mentioned a few minutes ago, there aren't many. It, the Lightning looks like an F-150 because it is an F-150. Um, but there yeah. are a few subtle things like the grill and a couple light bars, right? Yeah, up front, it gets, uh, you know, a closed off grill, which, you know, EVs don't need a lot of cooling. So designers are free to do a little bit more with the grill. Uh, there's that light bar that spreads across from the headlights, which I think looks really cool. When we first saw that teaser, uh, you know, it was very dark. And, you know, so I was like, oh, it looks like a Rivian. You know, I was like, oh, they're kind of stealing the look. And then when we saw it, it was like, oh, no, not at all. This looks like a like just a very healthy evolution of F-150 design. And I really like mm -hmm. it because you move out to the rear. You know, those are some pretty signature F-150 taillights that also happen to have that light bar across it. It's just very subtle things that set it apart, but keep it super familiar. And I, I think that's why I really like it because it's not trying to be something really crazy over the top. It's just trying to be an F-150. And being an F-150 yep. has been the F-150's meal ticket for decades <laughs> because they can't That's sell That's what it does best, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, to the point you just made, has a solid grill because obviously you don't need airflow through a radiator because there's no engine. And since there's no engine under the hood, you get a gigantic storage space. Ford calls it, it's a frunk. Ford calls it the mega power frunk. Um, and it's pretty huge. You can fit two sets of golf clubs in there up to 400 pounds. It power opens. Um, it's got a whole bunch of different outlets in there. I think there are four 110-volt uh, household outlets plus a couple USB ports. So you could be like tailgating at both ends of the vehicle, right? You could have your traditional tailgate out the back. You could have a, like a crock pot going up front or whatever. <laughs> have a, two different parties, yeah. Sean. Yeah, you, yeah, you could have, you know, you know, maybe a potluck. You have some in the back, some <laughs> up front. You know, you just walk around the car and you fill a plate or a bowl. I don't know. It could be really sweet. Um clearly that's how I would use it apparently since that's the first thing that came to my mind. Um, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but uh, no, it, it's super innovative because one of the weird quirks with a, you know, I, I would, I want to say perhaps daily driving a pickup truck is just kind of like covered storage. You know, you can get a cap for the bed and, you know, and that solves everything. But if not, you're really putting important things like, like groceries or valuables mm -hmm. inside the truck in the back seat, you know, some automakers have like clever storage compartments back there, which is really cool, but it doesn't beat, uh, you know, just like a trunk or a, a hatchback, you know, kind of thing. Exactly. So this mega power frunk really solves that, <laughs> that you have a closed space with a ton of room to put what you want to put away so no one can see it. Yeah, and it's lockable and it's weather tight. So you can put your, if you're working on a job site, you can lock your tools in there, your power tools. You don't have to worry about them being stolen. They're out of sight. They're out completely out of the elements too. Um, quick uh, uh, quick uh, comment in the chat from GA Sacramento. And Sean, you might be able to address this because you cover the news a lot more closely than I do. But he or she says, I heard recently from the news that Ford has thousands of trucks waiting for semiconductor chips, which is due to the global shortage. I'm wondering what their solution to this shortage problem uh, will be, if there is one yet. Uh, unfortunately, there just isn't one. What Ford is essentially doing is parking these trucks and uh, they're idling the, the uh, F-150 plants. And then as they get the uh, chips and other components they need, they finish building them and then ship them out. Um, that's really the only thing they can do. Ford said in its uh, outlook for the rest of the year that it expects quarter two uh, to be the worst of this chip shortage. So if you're shopping for an F-150 right now, expect to pay premium prices because they'll be in short supply and expect very, mm -hmm. very low inventory overall. Yeah. 
Uh, another tech-related question from Marcus Miller. Why does it still have that silly, that old silly antenna, the mast antenna? And that's something I noticed at the background. I thought, that's kind of odd. Yeah, Here's I this brand too. new flagship yeah. vehicle. They put a whip on it. Like, what? <laughs> yeah. Come on, you can do better. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, that is so odd. And I, I didn't dive deep enough. I'm like, maybe it has a different purpose other than, you know, it's, you know, original intention. But I, it seems like it's just that old school thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I, you maybe that's all you need uh, for the tech inside, though. Oh, go ahead, Sean. Sorry. No, no, I was just going to say I glanced over here at our, our Facebook chat, and we have uh, uh, Tony. I'm sorry about the last name, y Yayad. Uh, perhaps uh, says, does Chevy have an answer to the Ford Lightning? Um, they do. They've teased. Uh, I want to say two months ago their electric Chevy Silverado. We literally know nothing else about it, though. We just know it's coming. So Ford definitely got the jump on them with that. Uh, yeah. then we have, uh, Jesus Santana says he likes the truck. He or she likes the truck, uh, but says drop the lightning. It's not a lightning truck, which we know is a sticking point with, uh, some F-150 enthusiasts, Craig. I could, I could see that personally. I think lightning is the perfect name for this truck. I mean, it's, it's electric and it's powerful and it just, it just meshes It dovetails, right? Lightning. It's cool. But I could see where yeah, some enthusiasts it, might not I think like it's that. Awesome. I think it's so awesome, Craig, because it's so different from when Ford was like, we're going to call what would become the Mach E. That was going to be the Mach 1. And I remember the same kind of backlash came out. And everyone's yes, like, do not yes, use yes. the Mach 1 name. Very bad. And it was for good reason. That made no sense on an electric SUV. Why would you take such a storied nameplate like that from the Mustang and apply it to an electric SUV, even though it was going to wear some Mustang design elements. Bad decision. Very happy they went with Mach E. For this, though, Lightning is an F-150 name, and Lightning is it's associated with electricity. So I, I think it works personally. I totally respect the original Lightnings. I think they're super cool trucks, and I understand where the argument is that don't don't perhaps tarnish that name. Uh, but I think it it's excellent. Yeah. Mr. Spork says, fastest lightning ever. Get over it, gas heads. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. It's probably true. Just doesn't sound as good because it doesn't sound of anything. <laughs> it's just a whirring noise, right? Um, yeah. As for tech, though, it's pretty impressive. Uh, you get a 15 and a half inch display running Sync 4A. That's obviously the top offering, but it's very similar if you've seen a Mustang Mach-E, that giant... Uh, you know, portrait style screen, which actually is very nicely integrated into the dashboard. When I saw it, I'm like, okay, Agreed. this makes sense. This works. Uh, and there's a 12 inch digital instrument cluster that's available uh, in the truck as well. But interior wise, again, it's an F-150. You can get uh, the fold out workstation. You can get the max recline front seats and it looks and feels otherwise like a typical F-150. So yeah, there I, you go. I can't, uh, I, I don't I don't have the source on me, but I believe I heard uh, something along the lines of the way Ford plans to turn a profit on this truck is simply because it uses so many standard F-150 components. So, I mean, yes. you're talking economies of scale. I mean, that that's very smart. Like like we said, this is depending on how you look at it. This is a super smart way to go about transitioning to EVs or maybe kind of lazy. Oh, you know, it, it kind of depends what court are you in? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Two sides to the same coin. Uh, lots of activity in the chat room today. Just a reminder, uh, drop your questions or comments in there. As the show goes on, we'll do our best to address those. Uh, Lord God Amon Ra says, I like the truck and I want one. Well, uh, about, uh, what, 45,000 other people liked it too and plunked raised, down a $100 deposit the hand. to reserve one, right? Yeah. Yeah. According to Jim Farley, but, that's how many they got in 48 hours. Whew. It's pretty good sales. Pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what, what can people look for, Sean, when it comes to performance? Because we talked about this well, a little bit earlier, but. Yeah, we did. But uh, in terms of other performance specs, uh, we're looking at about uh, uh, somewhere in the four second range for zero to 60 mile per hour. Uh we don't know that exact figure, and I think we were saying 4.4 seconds because we saw the president mm. get behind the wheel of the truck earlier this week <laughs> in, a, in a camouflage prototype, and uh, 
he kind of blurted out 4.4 seconds. And I know a PR rep was kind of like, oh, we're not supposed to say that yet kind of thing. So it sounds like that person said that's correct, but we weren't supposed to know that. So somewhere in four seconds uh, and 106 yeah. mile per hour top speed. Yep. So, uh, yes, it should be plenty quick off the line. And if you're really in a hurry to outrun this some other people. quick. It is, as the Mr. President said, um, yeah. and I, I wrote in it too for the the backgrounder event that Ford hosted. And I mean, I hate to say this, but it was not surprising because I mean, it drives like other electric vehicles. It's really quick, right off the line, tons of torque. Suddenly, you're doing 80 miles an hour on the track, and there's barely any wind or tire noise. That's about the experience. It's yeah, but that's <laughs> pretty that's, standard that's if you've been in a high power EV. Yeah. 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 I'm sure it felt interesting in a, in a pickup truck though. I've never driven an electric truck. Um, so I'm sure that was an interesting sensation from an F-150. Yes. And the other very important thing to note, one, uh, aside from the frunk and the ability to like power your house, which we'll get to in just a second, uh, the truck has an independent rear suspension, which is a very, f the first for the F series from Ford. And when the guy was driving me around on the off road course, this truck felt amazingly planted. Now, it probably weighs like 8,000 pounds. We don't have a weight figure from Ford yet, but the, uh, the Hummer truck, the I guess the weight figure on 9, that came out or leaked or something. Something like that, more than 9,000 pounds. So it stands to reason the Lightning's going to be pretty heavy. But that being said, yeah. when the guy was driving around, me around on the off-road course, that thing was absolutely planted. Um, over washboard surfaces, over ruts, anything like that, the back end just stayed where you wanted it. Like with a, a live axle, if you go over washboard surfaces, you get that sort of side to side shimmy, you know, as the thing kind of fights itself for traction. None of that, none whatsoever. And with all of the standard skid plates and the battery, additional battery protection beyond that, the guy was just bashing it on the tops of these little hills <laughs> to demonstrate the durability just kaboom boom boom and he's like that's oh, not a problem just keep wow. going so it should well, uh, with all that torque no Sorry, i was Sean. just gonna say well that that i was just gonna say that that uh bodes well for it for people who do want to take it off road i mean you saw firsthand what you know your your driver is just like oh it's fine yeah just slam into this <laughs> yeah i mean he's a, a development engineer so he he doesn't have to pay for it when it breaks but right um yeah. it should be very capable and refined and i think somebody asked earlier in the chat room if they were going to do like an electric expedition or something off of this vehicle uh off of this this derivation of the f-150 frame and I have not heard anything about that, but it would seem pretty plausible, right? I mean, if the Expedition you is know, a body-on-frame SUV. I, I actually, when I first looked at this, this look, the front end looks more like an Expedition in my eyes than an F-150 just at first glance. The way, uh, just mm. that shape kind of lent itself to uh, the SUV. So who knows? Maybe we'll see that. Yeah, it'd be smart on Ford. Uh, lots of other tech too, of course, wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, that's pretty standard these days. Over-the-air mm -hmm. updates that should be super quick that can fix bugs or add more features. And then, of course, Blue Cruise, uh, which Blue's I don't Blues. know if you've experienced. Yeah, Blue's Clues. I don't know if you've ever always, uh, tested always Super Cruise. <laughs> yes. I don't know if you've ever tested Super Cruise from GM, but it's really, really good. And this promises yeah. to be essentially the same thing. So cautiously yep. optimistic that Ford will be able to match what GM has had. Um, what else is there? Um, phone as a key. Well, we the, yeah. Yeah. Phone is key. That, that, that's something that's starting to proliferate across different brands. You know, I think BMW has like a exclusive Apple partnership, if I'm not mistaken, uh, to do something with phone as key. Um, it's, it's cool to see that proliferating across, like I just said, because it's so, you know, at this point, almost everybody has a smartphone. So why not get ditched the key fob and just have it on your phone? You know, like your phone is super secure these days, you know, with, you know, facial recognition, you know, a touch ID, whatever, you know, even a passcode, you know, all sorts of stuff. So I think it's super smart. And this F-150 could bring a lot of really, um, 
advanced technology to a lot of people. And I mean, we'll get to prices later because it's going to come at a cost, but uh, there's a yeah. lot of technology baked into what has long been a traditional kind of workhorse. Yeah, exactly. Um, but perhaps aside from the frunk, there's the independent rear suspension. There's pretty good driving range for a, what is a very tall and heavy vehicle. But perhaps the coolest feature of this of this new Lightning is what Ford is calling intelligent backup power. And basically what that Super means cool. is, yes, the truck can power your entire house during a blackout. So you've got the, uh, the wall charger installed in your garage or carport or whatever. The lights go out. The truck can automatically feed power from its battery pack up to nine, add up to 9.6 kilowatts. And it routes that back through the charger, then through an inverter because it has to take it from DC to AC. But after that, it routes it automatically right to your home's electrical system. So everything just works as it normally would. It's absolutely brilliant. And Ford says that the truck with its larger battery should be able to provide enough how, uh, electricity for a house for three days. 10 days if you ration that power, which is crazy. So, I mean, this would have been if more people, if this truck were out when the, the power outage happened in Texas, right? It could have saved a lot of people mm -hmm. a lot of headaches. Yeah, I mean, this is just, this blows my mind. I mean, if you would have told me even five years ago, you know, in five years ago, we were starting to see, you know, some electric vehicles. If you would have told me five years ago that if I had my electric vehicle plugged in and the power goes out i could tell the car uh there's a blackout power my house please that is mind-blowing that is mind-blowing mm -hmm. technology right there i mean yep. seriously like you said the headaches that can save you know you know i've been here you know work from home if the power goes out you can't work you know now you have no excuse if the power goes out if you work from home <laughs> there's, <laughs> oh there's I, whoops, my truck was unplugged sorry <laughs> i forgot it. yeah <laughs> Yeah, but but still, I mean, seriously, in terms of the headaches it saves from unloading your freezer into a cooler or finding somebody nearby who does have power to save, you know, food if it's perishable, you know, I mean, the list goes on about how smart this is. And I mean, Ford isn't the or first people that to need like medical kind of devices or something. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, this is, you know, you could you could argue it could be life saving. Uh, but, uh, yeah. you know, Ford isn't the first to tap into this kind of thing. But it could be the biggest expansion of this. And I, I think it's just going to grow in popularity. And the, I think the opportunities are immense for this kind of thing. It, it's just mind blowingly cool. Absolutely. Uh, Derek Hurst in the, the YouTube chat is asking, um, does the truck have regenerative braking? And uh, Ford didn't call that out specifically, but I mean, it ninety nine point nine 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 percent sure it's going to have that because that's just basically a required feature in an EV or like a hybrid because you you want to be able to recuperate all that energy put it back into the battery so I I would bet my life that this truck's going to have that. Um, but what yep, about charging yeah. times? Well, charging times like any electric vehicle, you definitely don't want to plug it into a one twenty volt outlet because if you do, Craig, you're going to get a whopping three miles per hour it's plugged in so don't don't do that i've said that before here if you're going to get an ev research make sure you have a 240 at least a 240 at home volt outlet because if you're plugging it into a standard outlet you're gonna have a really bad time if you do plug this uh f-150 lightning into a 240 volt are you looking at 21 miles per hour much better you could plug that in for eight yes. or nine hours and you know start to get to somewhere if if not full, very close to full before you go to work the next day or something like that. Uh, and then if you mm -hmm. uh, plug into a uh, DC fast charger, uh, you're looking at 54 miles in 10 minutes. That's great. And an 80% charge in 40 minutes. So not the fastest out there, but very respectable numbers for using a DC charger. And uh, we discussed mm -hmm. on a previous show that uh, most people uh, charge at home. So that level two yeah. number of 21 miles per hour, I think is super solid. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, reservations are open right now. You should be able to, to reserve one. I, as far as I know, they're not sold out or anything. Should be a hundred dollar deposit. Uh, and the base model, just $40,000, which is crazy. Absolutely crazy for everything you're getting here. And that's before any incentives, right? Any tax credits. So yeah. 
That's yeah, again, that, Sean, that, to the point you that made. Rock bottom price. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Craig. I was just going to say to the point you made earlier. All of the the economies of scale for it is they claim they're doing it profitably too at forty thousand dollars. They claim they're making money on it, um, but it's just the economies of the F series. All the, the the scale they have there because they sell so many of them. Yeah. So, but yeah, yeah. I, I was um, just going to say on this, it's important to point out that there's that that forty thousand dollar figure is for what Ford is calling a commercial oriented truck. So the truck you're looking at here is not going to cost forty thousand dollars. No, they're talking about about uh, you know ninety thousand dollar range for one that is completely loaded. Then it looks like also, mm -hmm. but the XLT model is probably going to be the volume seller. I think they they. I don't know if they did it on purpose, but released pricing about that. It looks like maybe about fifty-three thousand dollars for the XLT, so not too bad. And mm -hmm. still, again, you can you can get the tax credit with that. Oh so. yeah, so I mean, you're looking at fifty-three thousand dollars. That's not too shabby for a pickup truck, any pickup mm -hmm. truck really in in, in today's uh, auto market. So then you take seventy-five hundred bucks off that. That's pretty affordable, and I think. Uh, like I said, this is just going to be a super interesting truck to watch and see where it goes. Yeah, and I'm just looking at the chat. A couple people uh, asking about the commercial model, VJ in particular. Uh, when is the base model going to be revealed? I would say stay tuned uh, early next week. That's all I'm going to say. But um, <laughs> on that note, I think we've yammered on uh, about the Lightning for long enough. We should uh, take a look-see and find out what you guys had to say. So if Evan, if, if you've got it handy, why don't you pull up that social media poll for us and we'll see what uh, the Roadshow audience thinks of the F-150 Lightning. And uh, there you go. 82% of folks it. that responded. Yeah, that's very good news yeah. for Ford. And, and based on the YouTube chat I've got pulled up, most people seem pretty impressed by it. So yeah, yeah, I, that I've is seen, good news. I, I, I was going to say, I, uh, I see overall positive opinions uh, on this. So I think Ford may have a, a winner. You know, I'll, I'll say I have a friend who actually owns, I think it's a 2012 Ford F-150 with the, uh, the 5.0 liter in it. And he's interested Ooh. in this truck. So, I mean, wow. I mean, if, they're, if, if their goal is to convert current F-150 owners, perhaps primarily, I mean, that, that's a good sign. Definitely. Definitely. Yes. But shall yes, we move on to some like, of our other stories, yeah. Sean? Yes, we shall. We shall. Like we said at the top of the show, there was way more to talk about than just the lightning this week. Uh, so let's talk about some other stuff you can find at theroadshow.com. And the first happens to be another truck. <laughs> wow. I never knew. Yes. Yes. Wow. Uh, Toyota uh, happened to slip us a little preview of the 2022 Tacoma. Uh, that is Toyota's full-size pickup truck, which competes with the Ford. Yeah, Tundra, you mean? Tundra. Uh, I, I'm sorry. Yes. Tundra. Right? Tundra. Apologies. Yes. Not, not Tacoma. That's the mid Oh, that's a Tundra, grave yes. sin you've committed, Sean. That is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, you know what? It's Friday and I've just, we've been in F-150 lightning bowls for weeks, just <laughs> stewing in that truck. So forgive me, <laughs> but uh, no, the, the Tundra, the 2022 Tundra. Uh, and obviously this competes with the Ford F-150. Um, and from that little preview that we have there, uh, this looks like we might be looking at an off-road model uh, with all those lights. Uh, kind of looks like an F-150 Raptor, kind of some cues going on there. But uh, yeah, they slid us that, and I just think they didn't want Ford to have the entire uh, full-size pickup truck limelight this week, Craig. Yeah, right. And they it's about time they came out with a new uh, Tundra. The current one dates back, if I'm not mistaken, to roughly the Cretaceous period. Um, it's really pretty yeah. old, as we have in the notes. It <laughs> came out, what, in the George W. Bush administration? So it's probably time yeah. for a new model. Yeah, yeah. Yep, it's soldiered on with some updates and it's they've kept it fresh, you know, but definitely compared to, you know, a new Silverado Ram 1500 or uh, the current F-150, not even the, the Lightning. I mean, it's pretty old. So is the Tacoma yeah. because apparently I had Tacoma yes. on the mind. But yeah, Tundra and Tacoma, <laughs> very old. But we should mention on the on the uh, the new Tundra is for uh, Toyota confirmed that they will do hybrid and eventually an electric pickup truck. So uh, stay tuned because the F-150 Lightning may have a 
pretty serious rival from Toyota. And Toyota does make a good pickup truck, people. Yes. Family heirloom quality, right? Pass it down to your that grandkids. Is, yes. That is what we always <laughs> say here about Toyota stuff. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, yeah, Craig, we also had a super slick little electric sports car in uh, Europe from Opel. And this is the Manta GSE. Uh, it's a little two-door revival they did of the old Manta. And it's super retro. Mm. And I really, really like it. And it seemed very popular on the website this week. Um, I think for for you know no explanation that that's just really cool looking. Yes, it, is it is it a resto mod or is this like a a new vehicle they built? This is a new vehicle they built, and they call it a huh. uh, elect an electro mod is the the term they coined uh, for that. Nice, and it even it even it's an electric vehicle. So it has a little battery and it only has 147 horsepower, which I'm, you know, only 147 that that's pretty much keeping in, uh, in faith with older Mantas, you know, these were never super powerful, super powerful cars, not muscle cars or anything like that, but it actually has a four speed stick, Craig. So you can row the gears in an electric vehicle. And that's so cool because what they did was when you're sick of shifting, you put it into fourth and it acts like a CVT. And then it's just like a regular EV, like it was just in drive. That's a that's incredible. The best that's of so both cool. worlds. I yeah, assume seriously. it still has a clutch that, pedal or no? They didn't Do mention, and they they seem to cut off photos down there. So I don't know if it's just rowing the gears. Uh, I again, they didn't mention anything about that. And again, this is just a one-off thing. Uh, this car, unfortunately, isn't going into production. This was more of a "Hey, look at Damn. me" kind of thing, but. You know what? These 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 brands got to stop building these "Hey, look at me" things because they're super cool. And uh, if we gotta, you know, dump some engines, you might as well make the cars look super cool. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and still offer a stick if you want it. Yeah, that seriously. driver involvement. Yeah, and to under uh, to, to highlight to highlight that this is not a production vehicle. Those aren't even real headlights that you're looking at up front. That's that whole front piece there is a screen. It's made of pixels. And it can display messages ah. on the front, you know, so you could, I don't know, maybe display some profanity to, to the driver in front of you if you're <laughs> angry you driving around. Something. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. But just they had nice, they had nice messages in the photos they uh, of released. Of course they you know, did. I think, I think one was like, my heart is electrified. And I'm just like, nah, people would do <laughs> way worse things with that. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, very cool. Yeah, the totally Opel Monta fun. GSE. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Did I say Manta? That's just my Midwestern uh, accent coming out there. <laughs> I, I said Ma Manta as well, so maybe it's the Opel <laughs> Manta. Manta. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have a feeling it's a short A. It sounds nicer. <laughs> yeah, right? Yes. We had but, one uh, quick question all... from uh, Shanky. Oh, yeah. Sorry, yeah. It was a, a Shanky G, just to back up a second, was asking if the, uh, Ford's new EV lineup will ever come to India. And unfortunately, I don't know. I don't know if you've heard anything, Sean. I don't know. I haven't heard anything like that. Um, I, I just don't. I, they haven't told anything to us or mentioned anything like that. Uh, sh surely yeah. it seems like as time marches forward, there will be more electric vehicles no matter which country you live in. Uh, you know, be yeah. it India, Europe, China, the U.S., Australia. You know, they're, they're coming. <laughs> so eventually you probably will get an EV with a Ford badge on it. And hopefully sooner than later. Yes. But you may not get one with a Chrysler badge or a Dodge badge, it sounds like. Yeah. Yeah. This this one was interesting, Craig. And, you know, we were we were we wanted to discuss this because Stellantis, which if anyone still doesn't know, is the combined automaker of Fiat Chrysler automobiles and PSA group. That's the US automaker and the French automaker. They've combined forces. They're like the Justice League now or something. And now they have <laughs> All these brands. Yeah. And what are they going to do with them? Because what are they giving them 10 years to yeah. sort of find their way? Yeah. Which yeah. You know, so is... we this 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 was relevant to the U.S. just because here Chrysler is the brand that comes to mind that really doesn't come to mind, but comes to mind when you're like, what's going on there? You know, Dodge has its muscle car thing going on and they've spoken about, you know, trying to reinvent the muscle car. So who knows what they're doing with the Charger and Challenger, Durango. Um, but Chrysler, 
Chrysler sells too many vans and a really, really old sedan, Craig. So yep, too, where are they too many vans that are the same, basically. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yes. So, yeah, like and, and, and so no, sorry, go ahead. I was just gonna say, like, yeah, yeah, that that's a very good point. Should you keep Chrysler around? Should you keep Dodge around? And also some of the other brands that are in, you know, the Stellantis portfolio. There's Abart and Lancia and Fiat, Vauxhall, DS, and a whole bunch of others. Like you have a lot of mouths to feed with money and new product and development time. Um, so you, they, I don't see how they don't pare things down from that, right? They have so many and brands. Not, it just not, doesn't not seem only sustainable. The money, not only the money that has to go into that, but you have to like define what each brand is for. You know, like yes. essentially before, when it was PSA Group, before they bought Opel and Vauxhall, uh, those, that was, those were brands that competed with like Peugeot. You know, so I don't, is Opal going to continue going like up market while Peugeot stays, you know, more, uh, you know, your mass market, you know, consumer car, you know, we were supposed to get Peugeot over in the U S and now, uh, uh, Stellantis did say, we're not going to do that. And we're going to focus on Chrysler. Uh, that was actually mm -hmm. a little while ago. And now, now we heard this comes with a 10 year investment and 10 years, basically that they want to see them put something together and say, this is what we're going to do. And here's how it's going to go. And perhaps yep. after a decade, if they're like, I don't think so, it gets, eh, you know, the curtain falls. Yeah. But 10 years is both an eternity and an instant because yeah. 10 years is, I mean, you just, 10 years is a long time. But then when you think about it in automotive terms, what is that? Two, like two product cycles it takes about five years yeah. or so to bring a new vehicle out. So you get two yep. cracks at it to get your house in order or, or they're cutting you off. So yeah, it's, it's like, know. yes, you, you put it, you put it the right way. It's a ton of time and no time at all for people probably inside Chrysler who are trying to figure out what, what to do. And I would like to hope that there has been some sort of vision knowing that the merger was coming, you know, yeah. I think it could totally work as kind of like, uh, you know, a nicer American Buick, you know, somewhere along the lines of like a Lincoln kind of competitor, I think that could do really well just because Alfa Romeo is, I don't know anyone who cross shops an Alfa Romeo and a Lincoln. <laughs> um, and yeah, Maserati, exactly. they're trying to, Maserati, they're trying to take to an even more luxurious place. Uh, so I, I think there's space to kind of play with that like Acura uh, area of luxury in the US with Chrysler because, you know, they make a really good minivan, but you can't survive just selling a nice minivan and then an old minivan. Really? <laughs> it's just not. And then not a really old sedan. Yeah, right. It's a very, so. very old sedan. Yeah. So they have tons of time and no time at all. But just like this show, I think we are now out of time. So it's been a very busy week, Sean. And I think it's time we wrap this thing up. I'm sorry. Oh, it's, that's okay. You know what? It's been a heck of a week. It's been a lot of Ford Lightning news. It will be nice to yes. recharge and get pickup trucks off the brain for at least two days. Was that a joke? You're going to recharge? No, but that was good. Look. Wow. Whew, so much creativity flowing. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> the jokes just write themselves. Anyway, thank you so much, Sean, for your help and your expertise in the news. And of course, we owe a big shout out to our producer, Evan Miller, who makes all of the gadgets run and work like there's nothing. Oh, hey, there he is. Oh, he got a he's, haircut. He's in, he got hair extensions, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so, he's the man behind the, the scenes that makes all of this work. And of course, thank you all so very much for watching Roadshow News Recap, where we dissect and discuss the biggest automotive story of the past week. As always, you can join us for the live broadcast every Friday afternoon right here on the Roadshow YouTube channel at 3 p.m. Eastern. Or you can check us out on Facebook or even on Twitch. So lots of great options for watching Roadshow News Recap. Anyway, with that, you all have a great weekend. That's an order.